analysis and basketball analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. NBA, some college, a little bit of everything. You know, what can I say? But it wasn't going to happen here with him. I was okay with it. Time for the Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Tango along for the ride. Zoom the pod brought to you by Price Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Picks. Gentlemen, we are going to talk about the Boston Celtics and who we believe they will be taking on the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, but first, we have to start with the passing of one of the all-time great basketball players, personalities, deadheads, <laughs> poet, philosopher, <laughs> characters, uh, Bill Walton. And Bob, I'm going to start with you because I know Jeff has some stories, but of the three of us, I think you had the most experience of a life well-lived, Bill Walton. Well, this is a personal thing for me. And... Uh... I'm not look, claiming to be an intimate or a buddy buddy, but we were very good. We were good friends, and and uh, uh, I enjoyed his company immensely. And 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 uh, he he uh, was one of the most interesting people I've ever met. Uh, before we even get to the basketball, and we, I, there's plenty to talk about there. But uh, he was uh, a man who lived life to its fullest, and, and embraced every day, and and lived life to its fullest, and lived it on his terms. And it was a very complicated life in terms of. Uh, uh, he he went through a lot of pain. I mean, physical pain. Uh, he uh, everybody knows about his famous l- lower limb injuries. Uh, but there was a period of time uh, about twenty some years ago when his back pain was so bad, his back issue was so bad that he truly committed uh, considered suicide, which he talks about in a book. As Bill, you know, he he was fully forthcoming about it. Um, he got through that period. And and resumed his life and 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 really uh, and earned his the last phase of his life he's more known for his broadcasting and there's a whole generation that never saw him play of course that know him as a broadcaster and 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 there was nobody quite like him I used to kid him Bill how about talking about basketball tonight you know I mean you know but that was he, he, he that was Bill Walton um, he he touched a, a lot of lives he, he had so many facets you mentioned the dead the Grateful Dead surely their most famous fan ever. He was with them at the pyramids, by the way, <laughs> when they were there, and uh, claimed to have been to a thousand dead dead dead, dead concerts. And uh, you know, they they uh, who knows? But uh, anyway, um, it, it it I'm I'm deeply saddened by it, and and uh, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss uh, my my uh, communications with Bill Walton. Yeah, it, hit, it it actually hit me hard, and I worked with him. I don't know, probably a handful of times at ESPN would see him all over the place at games and, and whatnot over the years. Um, again, don't claim to be super close with them, but felt super close with them, if that makes <laughs> sense. He made you feel I know. That he oh. made you feel that way. That's a gift. I feel like he and Charles Barkley are similar in a lot of respects, that no matter you see them and people come up to them and they're always smiling, they always have time for everybody and Anybody, no matter how much pain Bill Walton was in, and he was in a lot of it over the years, he would never let on to it. He would always be smiling. I remember doing the PK-80 uh, tournament out in Portland, Oregon with him a few years back. And there were uh, there were 16 teams. And Bill and I were both covering uh, one bracket of it, eight teams. And we were there for the practices the day before from – I don't know. They start at 9 a.m. and we didn't end till six at night. And he sat there and I was like, there's no way Bill Walton is going to stay here because you listen to him broadcast and you're like, he doesn't talk about the players half the time. Like, you, you know, Bob, he's just going on tangents, crazy tangents. So I'm like, he's going to duck out after like he'll go to a practice and then he'll be gone. He literally stayed there all day for eight practices and he <laughs> loved talking to everybody. The players, the coaches, the smile. And and then the funniest part is, so I'm doing sideline for these games with him. And I called Luke up the night before. And I said, hey, Luke, I'm going to have some fun with your dad here. I'm going to fact check him. (laughs) Crazy things that that he says. I'm going to see if he's making this, this crap up or he's right about how many lakes are in Montana. You know, these crazy things. (laughs) So sure enough, so Luke's like, yeah, yeah, do it. Definitely do it. So I fact-checked three of them, 
and again, it was like, yeah, like how many lakes are in Montana and like, I don't know, these crazy, you know, mundane things. And sure enough, he was right on three of them. Like I fact checked three. <laughs> he was right on all three of them. That was the thing about Bill Walton. So smart. Oh, so well read. So yeah. well versed. Like just could talk to anybody. And again, getting back to my original point, make you feel so good about yourself. You know, he'd come up to you, you know, with that big hand and shake your hand. Hey, Jeff, Bill Walton. And I, I'd already met him like 10 times. I'm like, I know who the hell you are. You don't <laughs> need to introduce yourself. He would do that when he saw Danny Ainge. He would go up to Danny Ainge and, hey, Danny, Bill Walton. And Danny <laughs> would just sit there and smile and look at him. And I don't know. He, he just He's going to be missed so much because of, again, that like enthusiasm he had for life even with everything that he dealt with over his life that didn't really go according to plan. Including the stuttering. And, yes. and you know, when, when yes. he, he stuttered until his mid twenties and, and I got help apparently from Marty Glickman, the great announcer, the New York announcer who helped him somehow or some way he got in touch with, he was put in touch or whatever with Marty and, and, and somehow or other he, he gave credit to Marty Glickman for helping him uh, overcome the stuttering. And of course the great joke that we all had, anybody who knew him was that, once he stopped stuttering, he had to make up for lost time and he never stopped talking after that. You know, he still he set a record that will never be broken for the longest acceptance speech at the Hall of Fame in 1993. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Were you there? Were you there? Yes. Yes. I was there in Springfield for that one. And uh, he, he, he ran through the stop sign and then circled <laughs> the pages again and ran through the stop sign at third base and a second time. So, um and and we just shrugged. Everybody just shrugged. That's Bill. He, only Bill could get away with it in uh, the way he did. Um, oh God, he, he was he was such a such a trip. Bob, and, let's, uh, let's let's break down some basketball here because there's some things yeah, let's talk about. I was talking to a friend this morning. Let's start with college. Okay, UCLA. Who at a hundred percent? Who's the better player, Lou Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, or Bill Walton? Well, that's a tough one, of course. And, and uh, well, uh, break Bill, it down for me. Well, Bill went through two. Bill was eighty-eight and four. I looked it up. He was thirty and 0, 30 and 0, 24, uh, 28 and four. Uh, Kareem, uh, I, I got the numbers. So it was very similar. But you know, Kareem wins the battle of championships, three to two. Lou Alcindor, that I there for. Lou Alcindor wins the battle of championships. Um, they they were not exactly the same player. Kareem's, you know, and Lou slash Kareem's great calling card. Ultimately, when it's all said and done, was the hook shot, right. the shot, most famous single shot in the history of basketball, really and truly, is is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's and Lou Alcindor's hook shot. Okay, uh, Bill is more known for uh, 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 passing. Number one, should be uh, not as well known as he should be for rebounding. We're going to get to that. I want to talk about that. And and um, I think his all around capacity was was. If I had to win a game tonight, I've said it a hundred times, thousand times. Uh, it, 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 uh, the center of, of all time that I want to win, if we're saving Earth from from uh, a battle against alien invaders and we're all going to go into servitude for all eternity if we lose the game, uh, the basketball game, I want Bill Walton as my starting center because I will run my offense to him. I run my defense to him. I will get every rebound I need. I will get team play uh, that uh, the, the exemplary team play. And and believe me, that's a tough call, but uh, I would I would take... Uh, I would take the best of Bill Walton uh, over any center who's ever played the game. Uh, Lou Alcindor, by the way, was 88 and two. In his 88 and two. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, crazy. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members. It is the most fun and exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats for a shot to win up 100 times your cash. With Prize Picks, you could turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. You can make a Prize Picks lineup in as little as 60 seconds. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you're locked in. Now, if you're looking for promotions, Prize Picks has got you covered every week from lowering select player stats projections on Tuesdays, which increases your chance of getting a win to getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. 
the finals mean more on prize picks, and so do the star players. You get boosted playoffs on selected basketball stars that you won't find anywhere else. Now, this week on prize picks, I'm looking at Jason Tatum, more than 26 and a half points. Jalen Brown, more than three threes, which may be aggressive, but I'm running with that. Download that app today and use a code CLNS for a deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Well, I, I think the passing, that's what I we were talking about. And I said, I just remember Bill being a better passer than, than Kareem. You know, that, that was... More yeah, than that anybody, end. except now there's only one challenger. And that's and that we have a challenger now. And that's Jokic. Yeah. Jokic is the first person that deserves to be mentioned in the same breath <clears> as <throat> as a passing center. Okay, let's talk about that 77 uh, Trailblazer team led by Dr. Jack Ramsey and those unbelievable leisure suits. Um, that team, was that team expected to contend that year, Bob? No, no. I and mean, first of all, Bill, you know, Bill hadn't yet hit his stride as a professional due to the injury factor that was always there. Uh, but that year, uh, he, and if that, and even that year, he only played in sixty some games, and uh, and they they caught they found themselves in the second half of the year, and went into playoffs, and they weren't the favorites. I I, I and and uh, uh, West, I think the Lakers were still, and uh, um and Phoenix, by the way, Phoenix was had a, still had a remnants of the team that had gone to the finals in seventy six, and uh, so uh, they 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 put it together, and uh, as the season went on. Um, the thing about that team that uh, is it was so young. Uh, four of the five starters were 25 or under, including himself, Maurice Lucas, Bobby Gross, and and uh, Lionel Hollins. Fifth starter was Dave Twardzik, who was like 28. But they were poised. And the next year, after they won, and now, and by the way, uh, uh, the, the finals, they lost the games one and two, and they came back and won the next four to beat the 76ers. Right. And, uh, uh, and Walton had a tremendous sixth game, great numbers in the sixth game. Uh, 23, 20 blocks and the whole package. Uh, he had a great game and he was the MVP of the, of the finals. The next year, they were even better. They they were, they were acted as a championships teams, as championship teams often do. They were with a swagger. They knew who they were. They kicked butt all year. They were 50 and 10 when Walton got hurt. And that was the, and, and then they went eight and 14 the rest of the regular season and got beaten a first round by Seattle in six games. And it was never, it was over. And it was ne it never materialized. Now, the other, other people got hurt, too. It wasn't just Walton. But obviously, Walton was the key. And the uh, next thing you know, and he, and he leaves after the 78-79 season to go and become a free agent with uh, Clippers. And that starts uh, uh, that off. Anyway, that I long believed that that Portland team was poised to be a dynasty, to be a, a, a mini dynasty, to win multiple championships. Uh, and and uh, But uh, it, it didn't happen, and it all didn't start. The reason, the number one reason didn't happen is Bill Walton got hurt. But then again, entire story of his career here's a guy you know he missed guys you guys know but he'll have to understand he he in, in the span of the 14 years with in which he was a professional he missed three complete seasons right oh yeah no i remember three. i remember and, and and then and his final season was almost he only played 10 games for the celtics in in in, in uh you know 80 uh, 6, 87 and 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 uh, and he bowed out in the playoffs and that was the end of it so he basically missed four full, three and almost four full seasons his career. So it was an unfulfilled promise uh, and as a professional. We know that. And and it was for one reason and one reason only. He just couldn't stay healthy. Hey, Bob, ha have you ever been to his house? In oh, I have been to his house on multiple occasions. It is. <laughs> you, how do you explain it to people? It's like, a, I, I, I don't know. Like, it's the weirdest. I've got pictures. I sent pictures out to people. When I was there in December, I was there in December <clears throat> to interview him for the Larry Bird Museum, which, by the way, will open on Thursday the thirtieth. How is he doing in December? Like, I I didn't see him at the Final Four this year. Obviously, I know he wasn't he wasn't feeling up to it. He but... he was hobbling, but he's always hobbling. Yeah, but he looked great, and I I've got the pictures to prove it. I I I'll send you guys when we're done and uh, with him. And, and he looked terrific. You'd never, I didn't know he was ill. I don't know how many people did know he was ill, and he didn't. And he was his usual exuberant, passionate, fun. First question in the interview, five minute answer. Oh yeah. Five minute answer. First question, you know, and he, he, we were looking, we would have been happy within a half hour. We got two hours out of him. No surprise. Two. He just loved people. He loved people. Like yeah. that's the beauty of Bill Walton. He treated everybody. Like again, who was, I, I was some young kid 
you know, sideline guy and he invites me to his house. And still my favorite photo I posted it the other day when, when he passed my favorite photo I've ever taken with anybody mm. was with Bill Walton and his dog Cortez Cortez in the TP in, in his backyard, yes. uh, which his backyard, Gary is like a, it's kind of like a jungle. I, I don't <laughs> know how you describe it, but legitimately, I don't know how many acres are back there. This thing is unbelievable with like the the plants and wildlife and whatever. And then he's got this teepee in, <laughs> way back there that I, I don't know if, what he was doing. Probably smoking weed or something. Who knows? But but man, it, it was just I don't know being with that guy. Like it was just so much fun, and it and it never felt forced or fake. He was so real. And that's why I compare them to Barkley. They're so real and they don't take themselves too seriously. You can have fun with them. You can joke around. They're going to play around with you. And uh, man, he's just going to be missed by so many. Like you just saw it with the outpouring of, of again. And it wasn't, it was all people telling like stories celebrating. Like Bill Walton's passing at 71 is so sad right it's so sad it's 71 he went way too early but i feel like so many people were like this guy lived such a full life we're gonna completely celebrate him and and talk about all these unbelievable stories that everybody had that again everybody felt like they knew him way better than they knew him you know everybody's going to have different aspects of his life to, to explore his teammates will have one bunch of stories that the, the the broadcast partner Dave Pash, you know, he 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 affected Dave Pash's life, and he'll tell you that. I saw him when I interviewed the other day, um, you know, and he uh, so many people, um, and he, he no, there's no question, there's nobody nobody quite like him. You can say that about a lot of people, nobody, but this guy will will not be replaced. Well, what's in, the story after they won in '86? Wasn't he with Bird? Is this in Bird's book? He, he, Passed out in the back of a pickup truck at Larry Bird's house. I don't know about that one. Yeah, something like that. Tell me. I don't know that one. I'll, I'll tell you that. But uh, but he was with Bird. He went home with Bird to Indiana to celebrate the title. That I re- that I remember. All right, let's move ahead. Then we all know he had, he never was able to play for the Clippers. He was never healthy. So one last shot at another title in '86, Bob. When he comes here, yep. Uh, just take us through when the Celtics got him, his arrival, and why it worked. Well, the story, of course, is that uh, Larry was with Red, and and uh, when there was a phone call with Bill, and and Larry absolutely says, "Red, get, please get this guy. We want this guy." At that point in his career, you know, he 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 was coming off the disappointment and uh, the Clippers. He was he was uh, thirty what four or so, yeah, thirty yeah four, um, and 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 people really didn't know exactly what to expect. And and uh, he comes in, the first thing he does. Uh, one of the first things he does is go to Robert Parrish's house to assure, reassure the chief that he wasn't there to take his job, but he was there to be a part of the whole. That was number one. So he won Chief Parrish over right away. And yeah, and uh, I think that was a very important step, but that tells you so much about Bill that he would do that. And and he, and he it was sincere. He meant it. And and he, he he knew exactly who he was at this point in his career and what he could contribute. And 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 uh, he he was... And the, the miracle of it that no one can ever explain is he played 80 games. He had never played more than 65 games, including his MVP season of, of 77, 78. He played 65 games and he never played more, than, but he played 80 games. And the two games he missed had nothing to do with his notorious lower limbs had to do with one was a broken nose. The other was sick. And uh, he was the sixth man of the year. And my argument for this, uh, uh, for why the Celtics of 85, 86 is the greatest team of all time uh, ends with the Trump card. The Trump card being no team ever brought a, anything like Bill Walton off the bench. There would have been great six men. John Havlicek uh, started that theory. And a lot of, and six men usually have a different role. Nobody was, he was the only center six man ever that, that uh, the one the award. And he gave the Celtics the greatest one, two center punch in the history of the game. But he changed games, uh, and he and Bird, the collaboration was uh, uh, made in basketball heaven, absolutely. And uh, as you knew it would be, it was everything that they both hoped it would be. Uh, when they were on the floor, we used to laugh. And I'm not making this up. Well, Bill would come in the game, 
and and at you know end of the first quarter, beginning of second, whenever, and and we would put uh, quarters up on the on the press table, and and how long will it take before they want to give and go, and 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 uh, you know whoever wins the the pool, and they they made an art form out of the simple give and go uh, that has never been seen on basketball before or since. The timing of it was varied. They had tricks. They uh, and and they made that it, it was an unstoppable weapon, at the give and go with those two and. And what, primarily because of Walton's passing, Walton's timing and, and, and instinct right. on the passing, and, but Ben Larry could finish, of course, either side of the basket. But uh, and and no, no, very few seldom do anybody else want to give and go, it, and the guy winds up on the other side of the basket. But with those two, they did. Anyway, it was uh, it, 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 he was the happiest guy ever to join the team that I've ever seen, and and I was so happy to be there, and it liked everything about the he liked the. The, the on court, off the court, he loved the sociability, the camaraderie, uh, and and you know, Rick Carlisle was expounding about it the other day. Uh, he was a member of the so-called green team, and you know, and they practiced every day. And then when they scrimmaged that that year, it was for real. They wanted to win, and the green team, which was the second team, was right. anchored by Bill, and they won their share because of Bill Walton. I mean, there's no other possibility that any other circumstance in any other team where the, the first team would be, you know, have a struggle, a team as good as the Celtics first team was, would have trouble struggling to beat the second team, except that Bill Walton was anchoring the second team. So uh, that's that's how uh, that's how good he was. And I think, did Carlisle also tell a story how Bill got him tickets to the Grateful Dead? Oh, yeah. And yeah. and Rick was uh, had a new girlfriend. New and, and he wanted first to- First date. Him. First date, Bob. First date. And and they were in uh, D.C. at Landover and, and, right. and Maryland. And and um, he asked Bill, could you do something for me? And he said, Oh, I'll, I'll take care of it. You know, I'll take care of it. Just show up and tell him you're Rick Carlisle from the Celtics, and Bill Walton sent you. And sure enough, it worked. <laughs> and, and, and goes, we're it. on stage. We're on the stage. He goes after we're hanging out with Jerry. Yeah, he's hanging out. Yeah. By the way, uh, Jeff, you made an allusion to his house, and you can appreciate it. And and you, you can't explain it to anybody. I, I've got plenty of pictures of it. His first floor. Uh, it's not it's not like anybody's first floor that you'll ever see in any house in America. I can tell you that the only conventional room is the kitchen. Kitchen looks like anybody's kitchen. Yeah. The rest of it is so laden with memorabilia and stuff and, and things and and including legitimate Grateful Dead instruments, right. drum sets, guitars, yeah, that are legit, the real deal, the yeah. real deal stuff. And and uh, uh, it, it is no there's hey, no other house like it in America. Imagine how his wife dealt with that. Oh, like, like how did she? I mean, it was a disaster. Like you walked in there and you're like, "Oh my god!" Like I don't know how anybody can live in this stuff everywhere, uh, every room, you know, like things on the walls, like no empty space. There no. were pictures and you name oh, it. It's Grateful Dead room, an entire room, more than even one, I think, but one full room devoted to the Grateful Dead. Yeah, do you, think think he, do, you, do you think the reason why he and Paris got along so well is because of their uh, fondness of the psychotropic herb that is now legal? <laughs> it could be. Could be. That might have been a little bit of a bonding thing. Who knows? Oh, yeah, that could be. Imagine walking into that hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> he also, Jeff, uh, did you see the, I don't know, the, the Bob Dylan bedroom with the Bob Dylan picture in the door? I, I slept in that room. <laughs> yes. I slept in the Bob Dylan bedroom. I can't believe that you were there in December. And again, he didn't let on. I can't. You had no idea. Yeah. That and and I, I was with Bob Noel, from, uh, who was the guy whose company is building the Larry Bird Museum and, and, and organizing it. Bob and I were there and uh, he was and and he'll tell you, uh, verify. He's stunned when I, we talked to him about it. He couldn't believe it when he heard because we, you know, he looked so good. He looked terrific. It was no remote indication. I knew when he wasn't at the final four, Bob, I asked somebody. And yeah. Somebody had told me that he wasn't doing well. I didn't know it was cancer. No, but, no, uh, I know. And not a poor almost every year. He's got this stool that he sits on and um, right court side there. And I don't know if he's doing radio. He's been doing radio or what for the final four. But um, yeah, I'm going to miss him. I think. <laughs> and and I'm one of so many. That will say that 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 they're gonna oh. miss again. Just seeing him, um, being around him, 
I don't know. Man. I just want to be, uh, uh, one. I want to talk about one basketball aspect sure. because it's unique to him, in my judgment. Okay, his rebound technique. After a while watching, I said, "Oh my God, he his timing about when the ball hit the rim and came off the rim was so impeccable that he timed it. It looked like he was basically flirting with go uh, uh, off interference with goaltending because yeah, you know, his time." And it was like he would sweep the ball off the rim as if you were sweeping crumbs off the table. Right. Picture this movement of sweeping crumbs off the table, with, with, which we all do, the ball off the rim. And part B, so often before we even hit the ground, he's turning his body and throwing the outlet pass. There was never been anybody else doing that in that manner. Nobody. And, and, um, you know, it, it, uh, it, it's he never hard. wanted the attention. He never wanted to really talk about. Again, that's the sad part. All these kids now, they now understand maybe because of his passing how good he was. But he never told these kids when he was interviewing them. You'd have other coaches come up yeah. and, and and tell the player, the college player, "Hey, do you know who you're talking to?" And they're like, "Yeah, this this dude who you know it's talks hippie. about nonsense during the games." And they're like, "No, no, no." This was like as good of a player as ever has played this game. And they had no idea. No idea. Uh, we, we tell before we put the current wrap on it, uh, you have to stress uh, how he identified as a Celtic. It is almost as if he right. had never been to Portland. And it had nothing to do, by the way, it was two things. One, he loved the Celtics and grew up. Who was his idol? Bill Russell. He grew up in La Mesa, California, but he wasn't a Laker fan as much as he was a Bill Russell fan. Okay, number one. Number two, um, he identified as a Celtic. He enjoyed that year. It was such. A, it was almost more important championship to him almost than the one in Portland. And it had nothing to do with the city, which he loved, the teammates whom he loved. And in fact, they named his son Luke after Maurice Lucas. People should understand that. Or, or anything to do. It's the organization. He, 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 he did not like the organization, the way he was treated, the way he was misdiagnosed by the doctor. And, but, and, and he thought it was a penurious organization. He thought they were cheap bastards too. And, and uh, uh, so he, he had no love lost for Portland. He loved Dr. Jack. Oh my God. You know, no, no question. And, and vice versa, but he identifies as a Celtic and, 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 and that was wholly important to him. And, and so it, it this is a, a, major you figure he only had the one the two years here in the second year was he was he got only bill got hurt on the exercise bike before the season started and wound up ko in the season but uh that one year w w was a treasure for all of us it was it was the happiest professional year of his life and and uh it was a treasure for us to have had him and and, and then you know any of us who knew him at all uh this is these are sad days to, to contemplate that bill is no longer with us it's game time, people. Game time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the tip off. Like right now, I was looking on the app and it's really easy to use. Just download the app. Lots of pictures for our sports fans, lots of pictures. And, you know, the tickets for Celtics game one and whoever they play between six, seven hundred bucks. But the closer you get to actual tip time, it's going to go down. So you and your friends may do a last minute thing. And I know it's a lot of money, but maybe it's two, three of your friends. Last minute trip. Boom. Let's go. Let's see what the tickets are on game time. You never know. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Okay, here's the deal. Last minute deals save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, et cetera. Now, the Flash Dealers save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Save even more when you choose a section for the zone deals. You choose a section, let game time choose the seats. Sounds pretty good to me. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account. Use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code clns for 20 dollars off your first purchase download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed 
And now we uh, we move on to what's happening today. Yeah. Uh, in the finals. So, at the time of our recording, uh, you know, Minnesota has stayed alive. You know, they stayed alive. But we, you know, for all intents and purposes, we believe that Denver's going to, it's going to be a Denver Celtics thing. I mean, uh, Jeff, mean Dallas. Uh, Dallas, I meant Dallas. It, it, it's Yes, uh, Celtics-Dallas thing. Jeff, how do you feel <clears throat> about the way the Celtics are playing? I mean, I called Bob the other night. But I, I, I during the game because I have to call to somebody. I called one of you two guys. I called both <laughs> you guys, but I got to you. This Cleveland series and how this like we bitched and moaned about how the Celtics don't close out games, and now they're closing out games. But I've never seen anything like this. They trail, they trail, they play like crap, and for two minutes they put on their best basketball and they win. I, I, I is that the way? Is that just who they are? Well, it hasn't been who they've been, right? I mean, they've been. Right. No, but now, is that, is that what You guys we're... were complaining. Wait, wait, wait. You guys have been complaining all year. No you know, doubt. Win close games. And and what have I told you all year? What have I, I, I have been the voice. I'm very rarely the voice of reason. <laughs> but I was the voice of reason all season long when you guys were hitting that panic button, hitting hitting that panic button. And, and I said, guys, none of this matters. All that matters is in the postseason. Now, I guess obviously they've got some luck here, right? They they faced Miami without Jimmy Butler. Donovan Mitchell wasn't there for the end of the series. Alberton wasn't there. I get it, but like at the end of the day, it is last I checked, the Lakers won the title a few years ago, even though it was in the bubble, and nobody nobody's taken it away from them yet, right? And right, I don't no. think nobody's ever going to take it away from them. They won it, so who cares who they played? At the end of the day, they're going to have to play somebody good in the NBA Finals to win the whole thing. Probably a team with two of the top ten talents, maybe two of the top five talents in the NBA right now in Luka and Kyrie. Um, I, I just think, again, the biggest thing that you see with this Celtics team is maturity. Is maturity. Is the fact that you can trust four guys to make the right play at the end of the game. Even Jalen Brown. Yes. I never thought. I never thought I'd say the fact that right. Jalen Brown would make the right decision, but he, he's making the right decision most of the time. We know Derek White is like unbelievable. Look at his assist to turnover ratio in the playoffs. It's insane. It's like six to one. Mm. Drew Holiday, you know, is going to make the right decision. And I just think those two have rubbed off on Tatum and Jalen Brown. And this this thing, by the way, that everybody's talking about now, not everybody, but some people, when Jalen Brown won MVP, Jason Tatum didn't look happy, <laughs> didn't look as happy for him. I'm like, like, first of all, Jason Tatum is not the type to jump up and down. We see this. The only time we've ever seen him do it is when he's mad at the, the officials. He's <laughs> not gregarious. That's not him. He was smiling if you look at him in the background. He's happy for Jalen Brown. He's happy, and I think they all are. They're in the NBA Finals. And I think they all understand, well, the two of them, really, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, that, you know what, if they lose another one, none of these individual awards or statistics matter because they're going to get crucified if they don't win the NBA title. Right. Ultimately, they got to figure out a way to do it together, and they have with the help of Drew Holiday and Derek White. My only little nitpick at the moment, and I let's just back up for a second, Uh they won three close games. Uh, we grant you that Rick Carlisle took the full blame for messing up one of them, and it's true. Uh, they won another one when Brown hit an improbable shot. <laughs> That's true. But And the third one, there was no if, ands, or buts. They won the game legitimately, making big plays. All right, fine. So, I mean, I think they've, to me, they've satisfied my desire to see them win close games, close out games. I have one little nitpick. I'm worried about Hauser. You, I don't know how much you longer you can go with with no bench scoring, and you get Porzingis and, back. You don't care. Yeah, you, so you get we get Porzingis, Porzingis back, back. It doesn't matter. But you know that's all. That, that's a nitpick. That's not a big major. Well, concern. it was interesting. And I'm sure it, the shot will come around sooner or later. Yeah, he but really struggled of, in the big moments. One of the reasons, you know, that they were so good down at, in the stretch was, was they had uh, they could count on 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 scoring from both Pritchard and Hauser, and and uh, you know the bench was was an, an asset, and. Um, you know, right now the, the disproportionate score amount of scoring is done by the starting five. But you're right. Whenever now we don't know. We, yeah, you're going to get Porzingis back. My God, that, uh, you would hope by the time this thing starts on June 6th. But uh, 
what will we be? I don't know. You know, how 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 sharp will we be? It's been a, it's a long layoff. I don't know, but it'll he'll be welcome back. But I'm in general, um, there's no reason to complain. People should be happy. They should accept what's going on. They should be grateful to have this team, and and, uh, uh, and you know that's that. So well, uh, I I I'm, think what what I take from right now, and I'm fully satisfied too. And yes, we will nitpick because we're sports fans, and that's what we do. We talk about the game, but overall. They should win the NBA championship. I think if you're a Celtics fan, you 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 know, very satisfied. I mean, you really. Um, but what I take is I think the roles have finally been determined between Tatum and Brown. I think Brown realized that he's got to be the grit. And when I say grit, that takes nothing away from his talent. But his post-game interviews, they've had some edge to him. The way he's played the game, it's had some edge to him. He's made big plays in big moments, whether it's scoring, going to the basket. I mean, can anybody stop this guy going to the basket? I don't know if there's anybody better going to the hoop right now than Jalen Brown. I, I mean, forget about it. Oh, he so, and some. What's that? And then the other end, some big blocks, timely. Defensively. Blocks. All round game. Like yeah. So, like, if you sit there and you say to me, like, well, you know, who's the star of the Celtics? I got to tell you right now, it's a two-headed monster. And you know what? I'm done and I know that that Jalen didn't get the awards, which is too bad because he does des- he does deserve some recognition. And sometimes you look at Tatum's numbers, and it's not his fault, but some of the numbers are empty. Again, not his fault. But like Jalen, but like you know, Tatum has kind of stepped back and let other people thrive. The behind the pack pass the other night to Tatum. Oh, that's great. That was a great play. So that it's was- like. So now some people are bitching because like Tatum will disappear for a quarter while the other guys are scoring. I'm like, well, what do you want? You know what? I <laughs> mean, my so God, bad. you know, like, what do you, you want? You wanted him to be a team guy and the other guys are scoring. And now you're bitching that he's not doing it every quarter. They were Minnesota was relying on two guys, one guy specifically, and they're down three, one. So well, it's like, right. so I'll get off. You're absolutely right make- about the fact that what were they bitching about? Dribble, dribble, dribble. And he'd take tough shots. Now what's he doing? Making the right read, right? The time, and they're yelling that you're disappearing, you're not being aggressive, right? Enough. So like, I mean, they the can't kid win. can't win. Right. So yeah. so it's like I think the Celtics finally have an identity, and then I'll let you guys respond to this, Jeff. I'll start with you. They finally have an identity where I think Brown has his role, Tatum has his role, because Tatum's never going to have that 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 growl that Brown has, nope. and the two belong together. That's it. I'm done trying to say that it's Tatum's team or it's Brown's team. It belongs to both of them. Jeff Gooden. You know what the beauty is, too, that Jason Tatum attracts so much attention in so many double teams that these other guys don't have to deal with it. Right. Whether it's Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, Derek White, when you put Porzingis back in the court, that's kind of the beauty of it. And, and that's the part that I don't think you can you can say apple to apple when people try to say Jalen – like I, I don't like how people say they're the same player. Like they're a lot not. Of people, well, they do the same things. No, they don't do the same things at all. Jalen Brown is incredible in transition and getting downhill. Jason Tatum is a guy who makes people better consistently now and takes on the double teams so that Jalen Brown doesn't need to. If Jalen Brown is the number one guy and constantly having to deal with double teams, we've seen that before. We've seen that before where he'll dribble into traffic and people will knock the ball away. Now he's got to beat one guy most of the time. And he he can do that. That's the beauty too, guys. Remember, when it was Tatum and Jalen Brown, I remember talking to people that would play against them, other players, and they would say, this is an easy team to defend when it's just worrying about the two of them. Now you got to worry about Derek White and, and Drew Holiday. And when Porzingis gets back on the on the court, like – that is really difficult, and give Brad Stevens so much credit. Brad Stevens, the GM, um, Danny Ainge for drafting Tatum and and Jalen Brown. Moving up to get him. Did you see the? Somebody put out a graphic, I think, last night of the other guys drafted in the top three when they ended up getting Tatum uh, mm-hmm. and Jalen Brown, and it was like Miss, you know, Ben Simmons, Markel Fultz, Lonzo Ball. I forget who the fourth was that was drafted in the top six uh, mm-hmm. ahead of those guys. But Danny Ainge hit it with the two, drafting those two guys. And then Brad Stevens hit it with the trades of getting Derek White, 
of getting uh, Drew Holiday and getting Porzingis, right? I mean, they they, they should get like co-exec of the year. <laughs> yeah. I want to put in a word for the, for the guards. I know we've said this before, but I've been made fascinated by this backcourt right now and that um, – it's the smartest combination backcourt that I've ever seen, and 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 they they're so they're, they're so alike, but they 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 fit together so perfectly. And I'm thinking the envy of every other coach in the league, you know, saying, "God, I wouldn't mind one of those guys." They should they got two. That's not fair. It should be one to a customer, you know. And they got two of them. And and uh, it, it it's just it, it's a what a, what a, what a pleasure it is to watch those guys. So yeah, I it just. I, you know, I'm Bob and I have talked about this, Jeff, when it has been the two of us, you missed the show. We were like, what kind of, we'll nitpick a little bit, but we're kind of done complaining. <laughs> you know, what kind of, we got to, we got to really be grateful for what we have. Okay. Let's move on to the matchup. Now, having said that, all those things, you got two veterans right now, Bob, I'll start with you on this. I mean, Kyrie, when Bob is, I mean, when Kyrie wants to play, forget about it. And, you know, you've got two veterans right now with with Dallas that are at the top of their game. How big of a threat now are they to the Celtics if and when they do and shut out, close out the, the, the game? Yeah, with, just, uh, Minnesota? Before I get to that, I just to say no team's ever come back from 03 in, in um, the right. NBA, have done it in the NHL on two or three occasions. But uh, uh, until it's done, I'm not writing them out. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, about Minnesota. But anyway, Kyrie, interesting. Oh, yeah. Kyrie's one of those fascinating guys uh, on and off the court that we've ever known in the league. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Jeff has referred to him as a top 10, possibly even top five talent. Uh, he, he is extraordinarily uh, gifted, goes to the basket as a size as well as anyone I've ever seen with either hand. Uh, the thing about him is he, he's a complicated human being, not as smart as he thinks he is, trying to figure out life uh, and and trying to figure out who he is, I think, frankly, and and is coming is figuring it out. This is not the same guy that we had. This is not the same guy that, for reasons that he never disclosed to anybody publicly, he left Cleveland and got away from LeBron after winning a championship and making the biggest famous shot in, in, in the finals history, and not history, but in this decade, sure. you know, win the championship. And and, uh, and and not exactly being a, 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 a useful guy in, in New Jersey, for some reason, uh, he is he, he's evolved into where he – whether it's some certain amount of respect he has for Doncic for whatever reason, uh, he, he he is fitting in perfectly. He's giving the, he's he's a, uh, he gets it now in a way they didn't so far. He hadn't be previously gotten it to meld that that it with the talent that he's always had. He's a he's he's, he's a scary force right now. Now, having said that, in the uh, he had a bad night uh, in Game Four. Uh, he had a very bad night. He went uh, he, he went. Six for 18, one for six on threes. Okay, he had a bad night. Anybody can have a bad night. Let's see how, uh, you know, so, uh, I, I suspect he'll bounce back well. But I got to give, give the guy credit. Uh, it's it, it, taken a while. He's, he's in his early 30s now. But uh, he's, he's got that marriage of, of talent and, and, and know-how and, 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 and willingness to share that uh, is making him a real serious threat. I mean, he, he had five and a half years where he was crucified and rightfully so for most of them yeah right? wouldn't guard a, a a chair i mean honestly couldn't guard a chair didn't care about guarding um again i've always described Kyrie off the court he's moody on his best day you love him and his teammates were like that on his worst day they couldn't stand him and they knew never knew what they were gonna get from him right i feel like now you know, there's some parallels here, guys, a little bit in a way to Rondo. I think Rondo, a lot of people didn't love playing with Rondo early in his career. And at the end, players loved him. And I feel like maybe Kyrie's gotten that way where like, and again, Rondo always thought he was smarter than everybody. Oh, whether yeah. it was the coaches, the players, whatever. Kyrie's the same way, can kind of be standoffish a little bit can piss some people off with what they say. Um, they don't have a lot of tact. Well, I think maybe at this point in his career too, Kyrie's embraced the fact that like, I know I'm, I'm, I'm Robin. I'm never going to be Batman. I, I can't win at all being Batman. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. The other part guys, here's the other part. So Nico Harrison runs the, the Mavs 
Okay, they hired him a couple of years ago, and he was at Nike for years. He's known Kyrie since Kyrie was like 16 years old. Hmm. So I wonder if there's some sort of synergy there. Because I think for Kyrie, so much of it is about trust. And hmm. if he doesn't trust you and he doesn't respect you, it's hard, man. And I think right. he, he respects he respects Nico and he respects Luca. He respect how can you not respect Luca? I mean, the dude just I mean, he he's a once in a lifetime type of talent because you look at him and you're like his physical tools. He can't jump off the ground. Oh yeah. His body, yeah. his body looks like he belongs at the YMCA, but my God, the, the stuff he is able to do and, and the, the IQ. And I think that's part of it, guys. What does Kyrie want, right? Somebody that he can be at the level of from yeah, a basketball yeah. IQ standpoint. He's right. finally found that guy that maybe he, re, you know, LeBron was that, but he was too young to appreciate it. And he wanted to be a guy or the guy. I think now he, he's realized like he's, he's my equal, maybe even more than that. No, you know, the, the Donchick is a fascinating, he go, he does what he does at his pace and nobody gets him, disturbs him. And uh, now, but I, I, and I, I am a little tired of the whining. Oh, me too. Me too. I mean, it, it, it's just, oh. come on. Almost, it seems like it's like every other play. I won't say every play, yes. but about every other call, he, he's giving you the, the uh, you yeah. know, yeah. come on, come on, Luca, you know. As, so. as we wrap it up, Ken and Ken, and I know you don't want to get ahead of it, but Bob, can Dallas win it all? Well, to win it all, they got to beat the Celtics. And, and Well, that's where I'm at here. And I'm saying, I, I, no, they I need I, Lively I, bad. They need a healthy Derek Lively. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to see the young man get back in. I, I'm I'm happy, by the way, it was, quote, only a neck sprain because I was worried it was, could have been neurological, you know. And um, so in that sense, you know, good for him. But, I mean, I, I, hope, I hope he gets back. Yeah, they 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 depended on the two-headed rim-protecting monster, and they only had one half of it in, in game right. four. I, I would be really, really shocked if the Celtics don't win uh, be, be, I mean, you've got Luca and Kyrie. You'd be that shocked. I mean, those guys are capable of getting, you know, thirty each every single night. And I know, I, I, know. I don't know if I'd be shocked, Bob. I I, it depends I mean, on Porzingis. How many? Doesn't how many, it? How many, how many of those other guys? You know, would you know, I don't know. Would be in a lot of other rotations. I don't know. You and, know, it, it would be a tribute if if they ever were to pull it off. It'd be a hell of a tribute to them. I'd take my hat. I'd, I'd salute them. I'd say, okay, I, I, I'm, uh, you know, fine. But I'm not. I, I, I find it hard to believe that that will be enough to beat the South. Listen, I'll say this too. Like, like, I mean, P.J. Washington's been awesome. Awesome. Mm. Um, you know, again, yeah, Gafford is – if you have a Gafford-Lively uh, duo down there. And I also think, guys – there aren't many guys in the league that can match up with with Jalen Brown. Derek Jones, defensively, can match up with Jalen Brown. He can make life difficult for for Jalen okay. Brown, right, no okay. doubt about right. it. Well, fine. If they, on, on, I know. Look, if they they will have earned their way there, I always I, I always say that they will definitely have earned their way there. So that makes them worthy. I. Uh, at, at all so uh, okay all right chance well we will have certainly more time to talk about this again we pay tribute to the late great bill walton uh this was a better place it was a better league with him all right for jeff goodman of gary tangway we'll talk again next week right here brought to you by prize picks exclu exclusive daily fantasy partner of clns media prize picks pick more pick less it's that easy with prize picks see you fellas